Hi, welcome to Enchiridion. I am very excited to share with you these facts on Placodus. Placodus was a marine reptile belonging to the order Placodontia that swam in the shallow seas of the Middle Jurassic period, roughly 240 million years ago. Fossils of Placodus have been discovered in Central Europe, including Germany, France, and Poland, and in China. It had broad, flat tooth plates for crushing the mollusk on which it fed. It resembled a barrel-bodied lizard, superficially similar to the marine iguana, of today, yet larger. Placodus had a stocky body, with a long tail, and reached a total length of up to 6.6 .6 feet, or 2 meters. It had a short neck and a heavy skull. Placodus is one of the most often represented reptiles of the Placodon group, and the most common of the unarmored type of creatures deemed similar to marine iguanas. Nonetheless, unlike the algae-eating marine iguana, Placodus was a dedicated Dorophagus shellfish eater. In its search for food, it used specialized forward pointing incisors to grip and pluck crustaceans and bivalves off the seafloor before taking them into the back of its mouth. At the back of its mouth, an array of flat crushing teeth that extended across the palate broke up the shells so that Placodus could swallow the soft bodied organisms therein. In other words, schistle like incisors protruded from the anterior margin of the snout and were probably used to pluck hard shelled benthic prey from the substrate. The back teeth were broad and flattened and would have helped to crush the prey. Prior to paleontologists knowing the anatomy of Placodus, they were regarded as fishes' teeth. Similar smaller teeth were present on the palatine bones and the hard palate. As a marine reptile, Placodus had traits adapted for swimming as well as other features allowing it to still be able to move on land, though it doesn't seem especially able to do one or the other. Thus, it was an intermediate development in these two aspects. In the water, Placodus would have relied on its laterally compressed or sideways flattened tail for its main propulsion, while the possibly webbed feet and legs could have been used for steering by pushing out against the water to turn the body in the opposite direction. This method meant that Placodus' swimming method and body were not suitable for pelagic life in the open ocean, but at the same time, it wouldn't be hard for it to find food, given that the greatest amount of shellfish would be close to the coast and in the sunlit layers. Placodus and its relatives were not as well adapted to aquatic life as some other reptile groups like the closely related plesiosaurs. Their flattened tails and short legs, which probably ended in webbed feet, would have been their main means of propulsion in water. Placodus appears to have relied on neutral buoyancy to take away most of the effort out of swimming. The dense bones of its skeleton and scutes or bony armor that formed the ridge along its back are all pieces of evidence suggesting that it took advantage of such a method and all of these traits helped increase its body weight and density. Consequently, Placodus could effectively sink itself without struggling to keep a light air-filled body on the seafloor. Its feeding behavior appears to have been rather simple, with Placodus using its legs to hover in the water above some shellfish as it picked them out with its four teeth. Additionally, Placodus had a parietal eye or pineal eye on top of its head. A parietal eye doesn't work like a typical optic eye that you see out of. Rather, it's a photoreceptive or light-sensitive organ. These typically trigger specific behavior in accordance with increasing and decreasing photo periods, or longer to shorter hours of daylight, yet in Placodus it has also been suggested to have helped it to orient itself correctly when it needed to return to the surface, something that would have been essential when hovering face down towards the seafloor. In other words, the parietal eye on top of the head helped the animal with orientation rather than vision, and its presence is regarded as a primitive trait. Its body wasn't especially flexible, in part caused by the way the vertebrae connected together, which resulted in a semi-rigid spine that gave good support when in the water, yet was extremely poor for land movement. The vertebral processes of Placodus dovetailed in at each other and were strongly connected so that the trunk was rigid. The large ribs of Placodus also bent backwards to provide additional support for the lower body, although usually ambition is armor. This may have been for support of the body when on land, as opposed to just protection from predators. The same legs that were used for swimming were not especially large, and given the large round bulk of the body, Placodus may have had to push itself along the ground with the ribs helping to protect the lower organs like the intestines from ground contact. The abdomen was covered with a special armor formed of the bent, right-angled abdominal ribs. The aquatic adaptations of Placodus meant that it would have been a cumbersome animal when compared to its exclusively terrestrial counterparts, 
and as such it probably didn't venture too far from the waterline because doing so would increase the amount of energy required to go into and from the water while increasing the chance of contact with larger land predators. Equipped with dense bones, heavy belly ribs, and a row of bony knobs above the backbone, Placotus was a negatively buoyant and powerfully built creature that would have had no trouble staying on the seafloor to feed. This body armor would have offered protection from predators as well, yet would have also hampered mobility on land, making Placotus slow and clumsy out of water. Thus, it was most likely a terrestrial animal that ventured into the sea in search of food. Crustaceans, mollusks, brachiopods, and other creatures from the seabed would have formed its staple diet. Placotus means flat tooth. It was named by Louis Agassiz in 1833. Placotus belongs to the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Cordata, the class Reptilia, Sauropterygia, the order Placodontia, the family Placodonidae, the genus Placotus, and the type species Placotus gigas. Species include the type species Placotus gigas and a second species Placotus inexpectatus, named in 2008 by Jiang et al. Its diet consisted of shellfish. It was up to 6.6 .6 feet or 2 meters long. It lived in what is now Germany, France, Poland, in Europe and in China. For decades, Placotus was believed to have been an exclusively European genus, yet the naming of a second species, Placotus inexpectatus, in 2008 in China indicates that while Placotus was not a powerful ocean-going swimmer, it was perfectly capable of following Triassic coastlines to colonize new parts of the globe. It lived in marine, open shallow subtidal, carbonate, foreshore, peritidal, lagoonal, and marginal marine environments. It lived during the Anician of the Middle Triassic, 247.2 to 242 million years ago, or roughly 245 to 240 million years ago. Fossil representation includes many specimens. And with that, thank you for watching! I have to give an actual update for the channel's state given that I recorded the audio for a lot of the prehistoric beast shorts, and those audios you could say are like out of date. So here's an update, I will reduce the frequency of weekly videos to 1, and I will incorporate 3D models much later in the long term, mainly due to the difficulty and time investment of creating such models. I will continue making Photoshop based compositions, and the quality will remain the same. I figured that because I'm a student and not a full time 3D modeler, it wouldn't be as efficient to create these models, however I will seek opportunities in college to learn 3D modeling. Additionally, I seriously underestimated how hard it actually is to make them. The return on investment is seriously negative. If someone in the community is willing to help, I can definitely work with them to make these videos. And I have to say sorry for hyping it up too much, I just didn't know the degree of difficulty and the magnitude of such a challenge. It will happen simply later. As always, thank you for watching. This is Ankai Ridian. see you next time.